Welcome to Wall Street Confidential on the Street.com TV. We're revisiting a stock that has been at the center of controversy, at least with Jim Cramer. It is MBIA. Hi, Jim. Hi. Uh, MBIA is one of those companies that has decided that I don't know what I'm talking about. And there was a very long time period in my life where I would take that charge very seriously. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's leveled uh, daily on StockPicker.com, right. much to my amusement because each time uh, people expect me to lash out because it's more interesting. I, I'm just not going to lash out about it. I'm just... Uh, frankly, just flummox that people will always think that I haven't done any homework. I mean, why would I opine on something if I don't know what I'm talking about? There's so many things that I don't know what I'm talking about. Why would I pick things that I, do, that I don't know what I'm talking about and talk about them? There's a lot of my you know, universe of things I do know. Well, what's your biggest issue with MBIA and, more importantly, well, the issue that people aren't really understanding? It's 16%. It's the number 16. Okay. Um, the agencies, the rating agencies, and the people who insure tranches of mortgages have decided that the worst case scenario is 16% default. And what I've been writing and stressing over and over again is home equity loan defaults between, for, uh, that were taken between 2005 and 2007 are running at 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is a number that, by the way, E-Trade gave me. So it isn't like I just pulled it out, yeah. okay? E-Trade did a lot of home equity loans. So I don't know how these companies, you know, if you go on a conference call like MBI did and you say, okay, listen, guys, the default rate is 10 to 12 percent, but you know what? We're willing to even accept the fact that it could be the worst case, which is 16 percent. And I'm just sitting there saying, boy, is that a cynical thing, or are they just clueless? Bad math. Now, right. Well, I mean, it's 50 percent, not 16. Right. It's my take. Now, uh, in their defense, uh, if I were them, I would be doing the same thing. This is very much an issue of confidence. Mm -hmm. If they were to reveal even for a minute, or understood even for a minute, how badly their situation is, then I think that they would cause panic and the stocks would go down and people would then be worried about even in, uh, using them for insurance. Now, the analysts on all these conference calls are always the same, which is, wow, the business is growing, the business is growing. I don't care that the business is growing. The fact is, is that they canceled the buyback, they, you know, mm -hmm. the buyback, they just cut it. And, you know, they explain that as that they need the capital because the business is so good. And that's fine too, but after a certain point, I, I just want to say to this fellow chaplain, that um, call me whatever you want, say that I'm an idiot. It, it, it's just like the, the way when I used to be at my hedge fund. Like I would have guys, you know, they would say, look, this company's bad, this company's bad, this company's bad, and they would short it. And I would say, like I did MasterCard, that's great. Because the more negative perceptions there are, the more my numbers are gonna be blown away and I don't have to do under, uh, mm -hmm. under promise over deliver. If MBI is as great as they think it is, they should love the fact that a guy like me is out there. Because what that's going to happen is that they're going to create a level of cheapness that they'll be able to buy. Now, this isn't that cynical position. That's Eddie Lampert's position mm -hmm. at Sears. Please knock my company so I can buy back as much stock as possible. MBI wants to say I don't know what I'm talking about. That's exactly what I would do. You make a good point, though. Confidence. I call it overconfidence. Right. And we've seen what happened to Merrill Lynch when they got overconfident. Well, these are all, um, they're all the same piece, which yeah. is that Merrill Lynch, the paper turned out to be worth 50 cents. Again, E-Trade says it's worth 50 cents. Merrill Lynch says it's worth 50 cents. MBI says you can't use the market to determine what the real price is. It's really what the models say. The models, I think, are all wrong because they're predicated on strong employment. Uh, as strong as only a strong employment, you're not going to get defaults. Now, if I were this guy Chaplin, mm -hmm. I'd sue me or take, take big action to make a statement to try to get me to shut up if he's really serious about it, if he's really serious about my being wrong. Right. He isn't. He isn't serious about my being wrong. Because if he was really serious, he would take, a, he would take action. Show and it. I would welcome him. Because the, the truth is, is that we've got to get people out of these stocks before they get really hurt. All right. That, show it. Bring it. Yep. Show me the money, right? Yeah. All right. Jim Cramer on the street.com TV talking about MBIA. Stay tuned for more of Wall Street Confidential.